from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. And as you probably know, this is our Thanksgiving program. We're going to be focusing on that in just a moment. But some of the headlines, oh my, they're so very important. This first one, Awake America, the world's final warning. And then going on, U.S. tries to revive peace talks and preparing for the third temple in Israel. Those we'll focus on as we go through this program. But first of all, I want to give you a little verse of scripture here. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to his name. Almost high, Psalm 82, 1. You know who taught me that? My mother. And how good it is and thankful I am that I was reared in a godly, godly, wonderful Christian home. And my mother knew exactly how to treat Thanksgiving. She was the best cook in the world. And she'd invite other people in, including your mom and dad, Jack. Yeah. When we met, your family became a part of our family. And it was wonderful. My mother and my father just really enjoyed them so your much. Your dad had that real southern drawl, and my dad had that Belgian accent. And he'd go to a church to preach, and he said, I'm too a Southerner from Southern Belgium. Oh. <laughs> when your dad was in the audience. <laughs> right. And I'm so grateful, too, that I had two wonderful brothers, Bob and Don. And I'm grateful that the Lord has brought Jack and me together Amen. to serve the Lord. Yeah. It's been such a pleasure and blessing to be able to go around the world every single week. We praise him so much for that. Now, Thanksgiving, I've been asking everybody around here, and I didn't know I had to look it up myself. When was the first Thanksgiving? Do you remember? 1621, the pilgrims came, and they were looking for freedom of religion. That's why they came to America and in Plymouth, Massachusetts, just south of uh, the east of Massachusetts down there. They celebrated the first Thanksgiving and how grateful I am that they found this country, Jack. Oh. I know, you know, your mom and dad were born in Belgium, coming to America and having freedom like they found here. I know you've been grateful for America. Oh, we really have. And uh, my mother's proudest day, and I was just a kid in grade school, and I taught her and worked with her so she could memorize everything to become an American citizen. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that was their highlight. Yes, absolutely. Well, let's thank God for all of his blessings. And now, you know, Jack has a sense of humor, and we want to start this off with a real sense of humor. And take a look, please, at this first one. It's a cartoon, today's schedule. 9 a.m., negotiate with Syria. 10 a.m., talk with Iran. 11 a.m., Bomb the Republicans, Obama. and that's talking about Obama's <laughs> plane there. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then going on, uh-oh, do you ever hear Pinocchio? Every time you told a lie, your nose would grow. Well, here we see, promise you can keep your health plan. Absolutely, Obama said this. Now, the good news is Obamacare covers plastic surgery. <laughs> boy, they're going to need a sword to get one off. <laughs> and then going on here. Sorry that you lost your health care coverage, and uh, that was from Barack Obama. Now, what's the other card that came with it? Well, it's a bill for the flowers, and you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, you know, Jack does like a sense of humor, and I'm grateful for that. We need to have some joy in our hearts during this very serious time of the year, Jack. Yeah, and that's uh, what... Proverbs 17.22 says, A merry heart does good like a medicine. Ecclesiastes 3.4, There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. And even Yahweh God sits in the heavens and laughs. Psalm 2 verse 4. But you know, this president has done so much to hurt people in this country, starting with Benghazi, and then the great religious organizations not being allowed to have their tax exemption to send receipts, and then all these millions of people having their telephones 
investigate and see what the conversations were. And now this thing with Obamacare, I wouldn't like to be in this man's shoes. And I'll tell you, people are getting very angry right now. Every prevaricator and liar is going to meet God at the judgment day. And this book says in Matthew 12, verses 36 and 37, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Be careful, Mr. President. Mm, my, oh my, very, very serious. At the top of my list, along with all the things we can see, our, our families and so forth, we're so thankful for. But I'm so grateful that before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said, I will come back again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. How wonderful. But let's give you an outline of the future. Take a look at this, please. Revelation and the Rapture Unveiled by Frank Hart. Now, Jack, you're not the only one talking about the rapture. Well, these are all in my library. There you go. Here's another one. Albert Bates, Qualifications for the Rapture. Again, the Great Escape, Preparing for the Rapture. Jack Van Ippy, that's one of your books. And The King is Coming, H.L. Wilmington. Jack, you know, I'd like to take them one at a time. The outline of the future. I'm so grateful that the Lord has promised that he's in control of everything out there. The first thing in the outline, the rapture. We've been talking about that. Will you tell us what the rapture is? Now, there are a lot of people within Christendom who say, oh, I don't believe in the rapture. That's impossible. Now, wait a minute. I've got you over the barrel. Why? John 5, 28, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, the rapture. They have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And that's a thousand years later when they come out of those graves to meet Christ in Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15, and they are cast into the lake of fire, Gehenna, forever. Now, what's the problem here? All right. Who comes out of the graves? Just the dead, in both instances. Now, what happens to the living? Supposing the resurrection takes place tomorrow morning and the dead are raised and they go up to be with the Lord, but you're living. There's nothing in the Bible that says what's going to happen to you unless you believe two texts on the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, that you know. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. No one who is alive when the resurrection takes place has any hope, unless you believe this verse. If it's only for the dead, then you better commit Harry Carey when the trumpet blows so you can get there. No. First the dead, then the living. Let's see it again. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Paul says, I show you a mystery. Now, that's not some detective story. Anytime you read about a mystery in the Word of God, it has to do with the first time the thing is mentioned. And this has to do with the coming of the Lord, the rapture, the dead and the living going up together. It was never mentioned it in, throughout the Bible? No, not even in the four Gospels, unless you're counting... John 5, 28, which I've already quoted. Let's study the text for a moment. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to verse 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, be dead, but we shall all be changed, dead and living, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we, the living, shall be changed. For this corruptible... The dead must put on incorruption. This mortal, the living, must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal, the living, shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought the past, the saying that is written, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? It's over. The dead and the living have gone. 
You can't get that anywhere else in the Bible except the two rapture texts. And you folks don't believe the rapture. You don't know much about your Bibles. Mm. Thank the Lord for the rapture, Jack. I thank the Lord. And one day he's going to say, come up hither. Well, you know, we need to really be praying for this next one, the tribulation. So many people don't really know what that means, Jack, the great tribulation. Rexella, the term tribulation itself tells us there's trouble coming. Tribulation. But it covers a seven-year period from Revelation chapters 6 to 18. 21 judgments. Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, At last for that day is great, so that none is like it. Daniel 12, 1, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. Now, the book of Revelation is written chronologically, so here is why we don't have to worry about it. We're going to be gone, evacuated, raptured. Revelation 3.10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from, and that's the Greek word ek, it can never mean anything but from. If God says, I'm going to keep you through it, post-tribulationism, he would use the word dia. He didn't. He says, I'll keep you from the hour of testing which comes upon the whole world to test them that dwell upon the face of the earth. And we're not going to be here. Why? Just like Israel is the bride of Yahweh God, Jeremiah 3.13, we are the bride, all members of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, and the great wedding takes place after we're there in Revelation 19, verse 7. Now, give me the next word. All right. The revelation. The revelation. That, that's his revealing upon the earth. Remember the prayer we've prayed for years? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You can't miss that either. Now, he's not going to make his bride suffer. So she's been on the other side when he said, come up hither, and they've had the wedding. Now they come back for the honeymoon on earth. 1,000 glorious years. He cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Revelation 1, 7. But in chapter 19, he comes on that white horse with his bride, the church. Why? Because the armies in heaven follow him. Verse 14. And he comes as the king of the kings and lord of the lords with his bride. And he rules for 1,000 years. Revelation 20, verse 4. Then he is recommissioned. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. Now watch it. And then his kingdom stays here on earth forever and forever and ever because the world is never going to end, Isaiah 45, 17, in Ephesians 3, 21. What a thrilling thing. He's going to be here forever, yes. Revelation 11:15. 15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. And if you study Luke 1, 32 and 33, he's reigning forever on David's throne over Jerusalem. And it's forever and forever as he controls and rules the people of Israel and the world. Amen. Uh, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Some more good news, things we can really, really be thankful for. You know, we see by the signs right now in the world that it's coming to pass. It's almost ready to happen when we hear come up hither. Well, friends, a wonderful offer for this week, and it is the Jack the Nippy Prophecy Bible. Please take a look at the commercial. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanipi Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanipi Ministries. Dr. Vanipi has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanipi Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanipi used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanipi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. 
love that commercial. Any occasion. You know, I'm beginning to buy already for Christmas. I don't know about you, but I, it's time to, to do that. This is a great gift for Christmas and my gift to you with your order. So please make the call. The 800 number, there's the address. And it's Soul Food, Jack's devotional book I'm going to be giving with your order for the Bible. Jack, you have something there, too? Now, the most powerful, dynamic book I have ever written. It's about the three popes, the final sign of Christ's imminent return. It's right at the door, ladies and gentlemen. And Malachi Martin, the great author who taught at the Vatican Biblical Institute, one of the greatest minds theologically for the Roman Catholic Church, was a Jesuit, left it because they started accepting the theories of Marxism, Leninism, Communism. And so he said, I left the movement. And Oh, there's been a battle between the Jesuits and the Roman Church. In fact, when Pope John Paul II was shot, the Jesuits said, too bad the guy couldn't aim better. He'd get rid of him. All get right, friends. All right, with your order, I will be giving you this wonderful, wonderful gift. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. You can also order that book when you call. So make the call right away. Here are some signs pointing to the list that we gave you just a few moments ago and how grateful I am the coming of the Lord is very, very near. Here you see one, Awake America, the world's final warning, 1159. Now, this is a DVD that Jack and I made. And then here, perhaps today, we'll hear the trumpet sound. Well, you know, there are over a thousand signs pointing to the coming of the Lord. This is a list of about 56 of them. And I know that Jack is going to want to address some of these on here, Jack. Not all 50 we don't have that much time, but some of them are very important. Oh, Rick, so 500 are already fulfilled. Then when you and I return with Christ, the other 500 are fulfilled when we're on earth, ruling and reigning with Christ, Revelation 20, verse 4. All right, in Matthew 24, the scoffers today, and they're going to be scoffers as one of the last signs, 2 Peter 3, 3, oh, where is the promise of his coming? Nothing's changed. Now, they use this then. We've always had wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places, iniquity abounding. How could those be signs? That's not what Jesus said. Oh, no one can know the day and the hour. That can happen a thousand years. Then you're the most ignorant person there is when it comes to the teaching of the Bible. He did not say you would not know when it's near. He said, you will know when it's near. I command you, imperative in the Greek to know when it's near. Command, command. How? Signs. And he gives all these signs. There are 500 now. But there wasn't a sign that meant anything until Israel became a nation and they controlled Jerusalem. And that's Matthew 24, verse 32, and Luke 21, 24. They had to have a nation and they had to control Jerusalem. It didn't happen for 2,011 years. 63 B.C., Pompey, the general, came down from Rome and took Jerusalem and took the Jews away. And for the next 2,011 years, they did not have a homeland, nor were they in control of Jerusalem. But something happened. They came home after Hitler's persecution, the Holocaust. They said, we can't live this way. We're going home. And they became a nation May 14, 1948. From 63 B.C. to 1948 is 2,011 years. And then they took Jerusalem as their own in 1967, the Six-Day War. Now, why is that important? Okay. Jesus didn't say when you see wars and Romans wars. He said this. When you see the fig tree blossoming, Israel as a nation, Matthew 24, 32, and they control Jerusalem, Luke 21, 24. Then I'm coming. When you see all the signs, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, in connection with the nation of Israel being in existence again. And control Jerusalem, that's it. Now, Hosea 6, 2. Wow, this is going to give you goose pimples on your duck bumps if you're looking for the coming of the Lord. After two days, he will revive us as a nation. And on the third day, he'll raise us up from the dead. Now, what does that mean? The Jewish rabbis taught that the six days of creation, Genesis 1.31, and the seventh day of Genesis 2.2, 2, 
pictured what was coming. And each day was like 1,000 years. The Jews taught it, Psalm 90, verse 4. The Christian fathers taught it in 2 Peter 3, 8. So after two days is after 2,000 years, but he didn't say at two days, he said after two days. From 63 B.C., when Pompey took the Jews away till they came home, it was 2,011 years. Ho, 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 what a prophecy concerning this hour. It's here. It's here, it's here, and I got proof. I'd like you to take a look on the screen right now. Israel in Bible prophecy, the reclamation of the land. They reclaimed it. Here you see again, the lamplighter, Israel in prophecy, the reclamation of the land. Now we're going to turn to something else, and I think, Jack, uh, you want to talk a little bit about the world empire, don't you? Oh, yes. For years, I taught that there would be 10 nations involved in the final world government, and God showed me so much light on it recently. It's a 10-division world empire as taught by Rabbi Hagian. And he says, when the 10-division world empire is here, it announces that our Messiah is about to come. And Jerome, the great writer of the Latin Vulgate, said, when we have the 10 division world empire. This is the hour when the Lord Jesus shall come. Now, where is this in the Bible? Daniel chapter uh, 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, 3, 7, 12, and 16. Here's another great prophecy. When this world dictator, the Antichrist, comes to power in Revelation 13, 1, has power over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, then this false prophet comes in the same chapter, verses 11 to 18, and brings in the mark of the beast, the 666. But here is something shocking. They sit in a temple in Jerusalem. What? He poses and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. Hear it. So that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Second Thessalonians 2, 4. And ladies and gentlemen, it's about to happen. The Jews already have 4,000 uniforms made for the four thousand Cohens, you must be a Cohen because that's of the Levite tribe. And they have 4,000 harps ready to play. They've got all the utensils, everything. They've got a modular ready to set up. And this is where this world leader sits at the time of the 10 division world empire. Rexella, show us. It's all here. All right, friends, we're going to put that on the screen right now and go right on through with what he's talking about. There you see it, the 10 division world empire. We've got to hurry along here. Preparing for the third temple. They're doing it. Take a look. And then the new temple and the second coming by Grant Jeffrey. Now, there was a promise of peace in 1979. Jimmy Carter, our president, Anwar Sadat of Egypt, and the Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin signed a, tr a peace treaty. Oh my, they were so happy about that. But, but it failed. It has, yes, yeah. it did fail. U.S. tries to revive peace talks. Going on, U.S. to propose Israeli-Palestinian peace deal in January. Abbas, aircraft, hope Obama will push for peace. Going on, okay, a new peace broker, and of course that is the new uh, pope, and there he is in Israel, and he is shaking hands with the president. Now, Jack, you need to tie this all oh, together I will, if you Rick will, please. Now, here is the final sign proving that Christ is about to come because the peace contract cannot be made until the church has been evacuated, raptures, and then this Antichrist comes to power by a peace contract. He comes in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21 and 24. And it's the covenant of death and hell, Isaiah 28, 15. Why? Because through a peace contract, he destroys many. Well, how can that be, Daniel 8, 25? Because he cheers them on. There's going to be peace, it's peace, and they're all shouting it, but there'll be no peace, Jeremiah 6.14 and 8.11. And when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. 1 Thessalonians 5.3. And that is the beginning of Armageddon, World War III. And it is this new pope, according to Catholic prophecy, who will rule during that time. His reign is when Armageddon is fought, and his reign is here on earth when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. That's why 
I believe he's the final pope because when Jesus is here, we don't need any more popes because they are the substitutes for Christ on earth. But when Christ is here, it's finished. That's how near it all is. Oh, Jack, you know, you use the word peace. I am so grateful that I can have peace right now. And you can have peace right now because we know that when we open our hearts to the Lord, we're forgiven of all of our sins. We're ready for the coming of the Lord. Have you ever done this? I say it all the time. If there are things in your life that you want removed, that's why Jesus died. You want to be forgiven. The Lord came to be your Savior. Will you open your heart to Him? Will you accept Him as your Savior? Jack, pray that wonderful prayer of salvation. Be thankful for the Lord right now. Oh, don't you want to be with Jesus? They shall see his face, Revelation 22, 4. Don't you want to live with him forever here on earth when he returns soon? Then pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the agony and suffering through which you went by shedding that precious holy blood to wash away my sin. Yes, even my sin. And Lord, I place all my sin on you right now. Wash me, cleanse me, save me. Come into my heart now, Jesus. I receive you as my personal Savior during this Thanksgiving season. In your holy name I pray it. Amen. Amen. Now there's my address. Will you write to me if you prayed that prayer? I'd love to send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. The Lord will walk with you every day. Be grateful for that because he wants to be your Savior and the one who guides you. Now, friends, whoo, wonderful offer of the week. And my gift with your order is this great devotional book. And Chuck is here to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order the Prophecy Bible. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation to 5995 to Jack Van Epe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation to 5995 to Jack Van Epe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, and INA 6Y1. What a monumental treasure. Now back to Rex Eller. Thank you so much, Chuck. There's my address. There's a telephone number. And don't forget, with your order, I will be sending you this gift, Soul Food. You can have a devotional every single day that Jack has written. Oh, it's just such a wonderful devotional. So make the call right away. We'll send it to you as soon as we hear from you. Oh, what a great gift, Prophecy Bible. So make the call right away. Friends, you know, I want to leave you with a very, very good thought. We need to be so thankful today and every day. If you can't think of anything to be thankful for, you have a poor memory. Absolutely. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. Oh, how thankful we are. And so do we. So very, very much. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving.